Mercedes, Porsche, two of the most prestigious car brands in the world. But did you know they both come from the same city in Germany? That's Stuttgart. And Stuttgart is not your typical German city at all. And you'll notice that as soon as we'll take a look from above. The entire city lies inside a narrow valley basin, while the surrounding districts climb steeply up the hillsides. This topography, known locally as the Kessellage, isn't just a detail. Kessellage basically means it's located in a valley. It shapes how the city looks, how people move and how infrastructure works. From above, the pattern is unmistakable. A small area of flat land in the center, surrounded by steep slopes with vineyards and city villas in all directions. There isn't much room to expand horizontally and many major routes are forced to run through the same narrow corridors. But what does this actually mean for a city of more than 600,000 people? How does traffic work in such a confined basin? What happens to air circulation, heat and pollution when a city is boxed in like this? How does the urban fabric develop on slopes where you can't build traditional city blocks? And how does a place with so little flat land become the home of two of the world's most famous car manufacturers? And then there's the biggest question currently shaping Stuttgart's future. As you can see, a massive construction project is underway, right in the city center. The old terminus station is being replaced by a new underground through station. Will this complete transformation of the main station and the redevelopment of the surrounding railway land actually work as planned? In this video, we'll take a closer look at these questions and explore how Stuttgart's unique terrain, industry and large-scale redevelopment are connected. When you look at Stuttgart from above, it becomes clear how restricted the city's geography really is. The entire inner city sits in a narrow valley basin and the terrain rises steeply in every direction. Because of this, almost all major movements in the city have to fit into the same limited spaces. There we have of course cars, S-Bahn lines, regional and long distance railways and the Stadtbahn. That's in simple terms a mix between street running tram and subway service. This this naturally creates traffic pressure and recurring bottlenecks. There simply aren't many alternative routes. If one corridor is congested or blocked, and that's pretty often the case in rush hour, there are hardly any parallel streets or bypasses to absorb the traffic. The geography forces the road network into a funnel, making Stuttgart far more sensitive to congestion than cities built on flatland. Road tunnels, railway tunnels and especially the Stadtbahn, which runs underground through much of the inner city. These tunnels are essential for connecting the valley floor with the surrounding districts. Because the slopes are so steep and space is so limited, even short links often require tunneling to avoid sharp gradients or impassable terrain. For a city of its size, Stuttgart has an unusually dense tunnel infrastructure. The valley shape also affects the air. During inversion weather, cold air settles in a basin and pollutants remain trapped. For years, Stuttgart recorded some of the highest nitrogen dioxide and particulate levels in Germany, which led to low emission zones, stricter speed limits and additional traffic management measures. The emissions themselves aren't unique. What's unique is how difficult they are to disperse in this terrain. Heat behaves similarly. The basin warms up faster and cools down more slowly than the surrounding hillsides. Forests, vineyards and open slopes around the city play an important role as ventilation and cooling areas, which is why Stuttgart places so much emphasis on protecting them in its urban planning. Oh yeah, I can't mention every single detail about the city of course. If you have additional infos, just let me know in the comments. I love to read all of them. Once you move away from the valley floor, Stuttgart's built environment changes immediately. The classic European city structure with continuous perimeter blocks and straight streets exists only in the very center. As soon as the terrain begins to rise, the urban fabric breaks apart and adapts to the slopes. Because the hillsides are so steep, traditional city blocks are almost impossible to build. Streets curve along the terrain, rise sharply within a few meters or sit on terraces cut into the hillside. Plots 
become irregular and buildings rarely line up wall to wall. Instead, Stuttgart develops a much more fragmented structure. What stands out the most are the city villas and hillside residences. Many of the slopes around the valley are filled with spacious villas, early 20th century houses and buildings sitting in small gardens. These areas are often quiet, residential and well integrated into the landscape. They also offer some of the most characteristic images of Stuttgart. Rows of homes overlooking the basin, surrounded by trees, gardens and old vineyard terraces. The result is a city that feels surprisingly green. Even in dense districts, trees and vegetation appear everywhere, simply because the terrain doesn't allow large continuous blocks. Between buildings you often find steps, gardens, small parks or steep forested slopes. From above, this gives Stuttgart a patchwork look while built up areas and greenery are closely interwoven. Movement through these neighborhoods is shaped by the slopes as well. The famous Steffele, long stairways linking different height levels, connect parts of the city that streets often can't. Some areas feel like a sequence of terraces rather than a continuous grid. Overall, Stuttgart's urban fabric is the direct result of its geography. Few German cities have such a strong contrast between their core and their outer districts. Even though Mercedes-Benz and Porsche operate production sites across Germany and around the world, Stuttgart itself remains strongly industrial. Both companies have their global headquarters here, along with major redevelopment, design and engineering divisions. That alone gives the city a very specific economic identity. Mercedes-Benz main site in Untertürkheim is tightly embedded in the Neckar Valley, surrounded by housing, rail lines and major roads. Thousands of employees commute here daily, adding to the already limited traffic corridors in the basin. Porsche's headquarters in Zuffenhausen show a similar picture. The factories and research buildings sit directly next to residential neighborhoods, forming one of the densest industrial clusters in the region. And it doesn't end with these two companies. Stuttgart and its suburbs are home to Bosch, Mahle and countless suppliers, engineering offices and research institutes. Together they form one of Europe's strongest concentrations of mobility and high-tech industries. This industrial base is also one of the reasons why Stuttgart is still relatively car-centric. For decades a large part of the workforce has commuted to engineering and manufacturing sites, often from towns not ideally connected by public transport. Combined with the valley's limited capacity for new transit routes and post-war planning that prioritized road corridors, the car became the dominant mode of transport for much of the region. So even though many Manufacturing is now spread globally, the decision-making, innovation and high-skilled engineering work still happens here. And that continues to shape how the city functions. Right in the middle of Stuttgart, where all major transport routes converge, the city is carrying out one of the largest and most complex infrastructure projects in Germany. Stuttgart 21 is more than a station upgrade. It's a complete reorganization of how the city connects to the national rail network and how the surrounding land will be used in the future. For over a century, Stuttgart Central Station has been and still is a terminal station. Trains enter the basin, stop and reverse out, which means that huge amount of surface space in the valley is taken up by tracks and rail yards. In a city where flat land is already extremely limited, this creates a massive barrier between districts. Stuttgart 21 is designed to change that. The new station is being built underground, rotated and turned into a through station. Long distance and regional trains will pass below the surface, freeing up large parts of the valley floor that were previously occupied by rail infrastructure. Even though the project has been controversial due to cost, construction time and public debate, its spatial impact will be significant. The most visible change will be the area known as the Rosenstein district, north of the current station. Once the remaining tracks are removed, the space, one of the largest inner city redevelopment sites in Europe, will become available for new neighborhoods, parks, offices and housing. In theory, this could help reconnect parts of the city that were split for decades by the railway. For Stuttgart, a city with so 
Travel, unusable flat land, this transformation is a rare opportunity. New spaces on the valley floor are extremely valuable and how they are planned will influence the city for generations. The success of Stuttgart 21 isn't just about the station itself. It's about whether the redevelopment around it can create better connections, more public space and a more balanced urban structure in a geographically constrained city. So there we have it. Stuttgart's narrow valley basin shapes almost everything about the city, from traffic and air quality to how neighborhoods develop on the surrounding slopes. At the same time, it remains a major center of the German automotive industry, with Mercedes-Benz, Porsche and many engineering firms defining its economy and daily life. With Stuttgart 21, the city is now trying to reshape its core and open up new space on the valley floor. How well this transformation works will play a big role in Stuttgart's future. If you enjoyed this deep dive, feel free to leave a like, subscribe or support the channel on Patreon. That helps the channel a lot and to all of you who already decided to support me over there, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next city. Bye bye.